Hey everyone, welcome to Keto and Crime and Thought Crime. Today I've got a very special video for you. I am doing a Cliff's Notes version of the Daybell case. And I know what you're all thinking, Tracy, you've covered this case so much. Yes, but it is also a case that has highly fascinated me. It's like one of those cases like from my past that continue to haunt me, such as the Atlanta child murders, which I do have a a video forthcoming on that as well as like the disappearance of Adam Walsh, uh, the Menendez brothers, the O.J. Simpson case. These are cases that will live in infamy and I do believe that this is one of them, that we are witnessing one that will live in infamy when it comes to uh, familiar side or you know the removal of one's family. I mean uh, or a family annihilator, which we have covered many, like Watts, like Coleman. This is no different. This is a typical family annihilator case. But uh, it also has a lot of cult issues. And so with the trial, the joint trial of both Chad and Lori pending in uh, July of this year, 2021, this case is going to come back to the forefront. And so I do plan to cover that trial, the same as I'm sure a lot of true crimers will. But I, I do think it's important to have some sort of Cliff's Notes version out there for people that may have not been following it from the beginning. Um, on this channel here, I have well over 50 videos on this case. And though I would love for people to watch all 50 of those videos, including analysis of books written by the idiots that were part of this case, um, I know that that's not always possible for everyone. So I want to do a Cliff's Notes version of the case and kind of break it down for you. So uh, just a short and sweet as well as throwing in at the end some of the information that's come out recently and just kind of bringing it up to the point of the trial, which will be commencing in about three months. So before we dive in, a brief shout out to my patrons, my channel members. Thank you so much for everything. I really appreciate everything that you do. And uh, I do have some new true crime videos coming out this week, as well as history. I've got an expose on John Benet Ramsey, another of those cases that really fascinate me, uh, as well as a, a more of an academic delve into the three Abrahamic religions, Christianity, Judaism, Islam. I'm going to compare and contrast their histories in, a, in one video to kind of in an academic way, kind of put those to get pieces together and kind of show you how the religions are interrelated. So I think that's going to be interesting. And I also have other true crime cases on the horizon, the Atlanta child murders. Uh, I'll even do the Adam Walsh case. So with that being said, if you'd like to join my patrons or my channel members, those links are down below. Like, comment, share, subscribe. That's the best way to help the channel. I upload three to four times a week. And so you will be seeing that many videos from me every week. And so with that being said, run my mouth enough. Let's dive in. Cliff's Notes of the Daybell Case. First, let's go over the players in this case. The first is the most obvious, Lori Vallow Daybell. Uh, she is a native of California from San Bernardino County. I She has had several, several marriages, including the one to her current fifth husband, Chad Daybell. Uh, she has uh, children by uh, both her third husband, Joseph Ryan, as well as an adopted son, JJ, with her uh, fourth husband, Charles Vallow. Uh, both Ryan and Vallow are no longer with us. Vallow was actually shot in self-defense by Lori's brother, Alex Cox, uh, as well as Joseph Ryan had also had a altercation with Alex Cox that did not end uh, in death, but was still very violent. So a history of brother, Ch of brother Alex kind of being Lori's enforcer. Lori has had an interest in both LDS, as well as the dark side of religion, that is the doomsday apocalyptic type of beliefs, which led her to uh, joining the uh, VOW network, which stands for Another Voice of Warning. It is a loosely based website and network of Mormon doomsday preppers, LDS doomsday preppers, and that is where she first stumbled upon 
the writings of one Chad Daybell, who was who owned a publishing company by the name of Spring Creek Book Company with his wife Tammy, whom he married in March 9th, 1990. If you want a very in-depth analysis of Chad Daybell's life, I did summarize and analysis his um, his very interesting autobiography. I'll link that up here. But let's just suffice it to say that he and Tammy were an average, uh, until now, LDS couple that had five children. They first lived in Springville, Utah, before moving to um, Salem, Idaho, just outside Rexburg. Um, Tammy, it appears, was the main breadwinner of the family for a long time until Spring Creek finally started to take off. And even then, she functioned as the CFO, even though her title was bookkeeper, of that particular book company. Now, Chad Daybell, having been in a vow, was kind of a celebrity of sorts in both the vow and the preparing of people network where he, his doomsday books, which were very fantasyful, uh, novels about the end of the world. Uh, I have reviewed all of them. Like, I'm linked the whole playlist up here. Um, so he was a celebrity of sorts in that network, and that led to both to him and Lori meeting, and I think Lori, because she seemed to have kind of fancy herself some creature of worth <laughs> within the, the realm of LDS, was gravitated toward him, and they soon began an affair, even though she was still married to her uh, fourth husband, Charles, and he was still married to his first wife, Tammy, having them eventually marry just weeks after Tammy Daybell's untimely death, which we will get to. But, uh, so as I said, uh, Lori had her three children. She had Kobe, from a previous marriage, Tylee from her uh, third marriage to Joseph Ryan, and then adopted JJ with Charles, who was actually the biological grandson of Charles's sister and her and brother-in-law, Kay and Larry Woodcock. So they marry, begin an affair. Those are the two main players. And then we also have quite a few, what I like to call the supporting cast of weirdos, uh, Alex Cox, Lori's brother, who was apparently a closeted homosexual who was fighting his sexual urges by going to counseling with New Age guru uh, Zalima Pastetes, uh, and eventually married her. Um, he was also fanatically loyal to his sister Lori, including up to killing her ex-husband, and we believe attempting to shoot both Tammy Daybell with a, a paintball gun, by all accounts, as well as attempted to shoot Lori's nephew-in-law, Brandon Boudreaux, as well, simply because they considered them threats to their little inner circle of a cult that they had uh, kind of procured. So Alex passed away on what was later diagnosed as a blood clot, uh, but there is some shade around his death because Zilema possibly connected with the Love Has One cult, as well as healings with uh, stones and other minerals that may have possibly caused those blood clots. As I said, there's no substantial proof of that, but that has been uh, floated. We do know that Zalema has been granted a certain amount of immunity from the trial and is singing like a canary to prosecutors, so it will be interesting to know what she knows. And she was also part of the Avowal Network as well. Other players are Melanie Gibb and um, David Warwick. Uh, Melanie Gibb I, uh, is... My definition of Melanie Gibb is a very bitter LDS housewife that uh, did not ever want to get married, was kind of caught up between fanatical religion and not wanting to be religious at all. She blamed, it seems, everything on her husband and her ex-husband and her kids um, and eventually led her to a divorce. Uh, she also saw herself as a spiritual 
an all-knowing being somewhere in this dark side of LDS and eventually led her to start dating David Warwick, also another doomsday avow sayer who has written books as well as talked about his near-death experiences and the visions he's had of the apocalypse. And then other minor players would be Jason Mao, uh, another LDS author who has written uh, a, a, book, a set of books for children that teach them to be the perfect warrior for God. He's a a former uh, military, uh, former military, former uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and Gilbert, Arizona police officer that lost his job under, let's just say, uh, less than scrupulous um, facts, circumstance, and uh, also was the technical advisor on a movie that talked about children returning to their kidnapped children returning to their parents as zombies, which is the only appearance anywhere in any literature of any of these people that I have read uh, about being a zombie, which became quite prolific in the Daybell Lori religion because they truly believe that anybody that was possessed by a demon or had become dark was now a zombie. And those terms were thrown around very loosely about a lot of people that lost their lives during this whole thing, including Charles Vallow, J.J., and Tylee. And then you have Lori's niece, Melanie Palowowski, formerly Melanie Boudreau, who became a fanatical follower. It broke up her first marriage, led to what we believe was Alex Cox's attempt on his life, Brandon Boudreau, and is now married to Ian Palowowski, who seems to just let her be all the cray cray she needs to be, even though he has of course, backed away from the whole fallow following. She gave up her children uh, as a result of this, or lost custody of her children as a result of this, and has kind of disappeared from public life, though I think we'll be hearing a lot from her during the trial. That's just my theory. So with that being said, those are the major players, and let's get started on kind of a brief synopsis of everything up until this point. So, March 9th, 1990, Tammy and Chad Daybell marry. They had five children. They lived partly in uh, Springville, Utah, and then in several other parts of Utah until eventually landing in Salem, Idaho, where Tammy, the last record of employment for her after they had put Spring Creek Book Company to bed, was in 2015 working as a school librarian loosely affiliated with BYU. Rexburg. So, spread fast forward to 2006. This is when Lori married her first husband or fourth husband, Charles Vallow. Uh, she already had her son, Colby and Tylee, and then adopted with Charles JJ. Social media posts, other record, records show that the Vallows lived in Hawaii uh, around 2014, where they ran a vending concession business of some sort. Um, many people believe this is where they started possibly studying the writings of the Love Has Won cult, uh, which I have a video on that, quite freaky, uh, because that particular cult has ties to Hawaii. But where they said they operated that small business and then moved back to mainland Arizona sometime between 2016 and 2017. In 2000, April 2018, Tylee's father, uh, Joseph Ryan, Lori's third husband, died of what was reported as a heart attack, and he was cremated. We don't have a whole lot of information on that, but remember Alex Cox. It's documented that he and uh, Joseph Ryan had a physical altercation at some point in between 2016 and 2018. Not trying to tie anybody to uh, illegal activity there, just thought I would point it out that there always seems to be Alex interjecting himself between Lori and her current or most previous ex-husband, of which there's a lot. Um, 
It was around the same time that Lori became heavily involved with the vow and preparing a people, appearing on several of the preparing a people podcasts, which had been wiped from the internet, cannot find them, but this is where she came into very close working relationship with Melanie Gibb, putting together a podcast as well as David Warwick, and they were, let's just say, along with Chad Daybell, who she was starting to have romantic feelings for after an appearance they had on a podcast together. Let's just say there was this whole weird love triangle working the LDS doomsday or speaking circuit with this whole Motley crew. Let's fast forward to 2019 where the fecal matter hits the ro rotisserie rotary device. Uh, you have January 31st, 2019. There are police records in Arizona of Charles Vallow begging police to basically commit Laurie to psychiatric uh, evaluation. However, the officers said that she was in a solid state of mind, cleared by local uh, mental health hospital known as Community Bridges, and they did not commit her to the 30-day stay that Charles Vallow was pleading for. In February 2019, Charles files from divorce, for divorce from uh, Lori, claiming that she viewed herself as some member of God's chosen people preparing for his second coming. He really said that he feared for his life because she would remove anything that she felt was an obstacle from her mission. It was during this time that Lori was said to have drained their bank account, but Charles did stop divorce proceedings and claimed he did want to make the marriage work in March of that year. Um, it was during the, though, this proposed divorce proceedings that Lori disappeared back to Hawaii for nearly two months and left both JJ and Tylee in the care of friends and family. In June, Melanie Boudreau, Lori uh, Daybell's niece, asks out of the blue her husband, ben Brandon Boudreau, for a divorce. Um, Brandon said that it was apparent to him that Melanie had become caught up in the same religious fanaticism that was being preached by Lori, Melanie, and uh, Chad, and basically he granted her the, the divorce but sought custody of his children, even though he said to him, even though her religious beliefs were not his, his and he thought it was a little crazy, he still thought his marriage was a strong one, but he did go ahead and consent to the divorce. July 11th, 2019, this is where Alex Cox shoots and kills Charles Vallow, Lori's fourth husband, to, de to death. Uh, shortly before that, Charles had actually changed his life insurance policy to reflect the money going to Kay and Larry Woodcock for the benefit of JJ, unbeknownst to Lori. And so many feel that this was a motivated shooting for Lori to get life insurance money. Um... Alex claimed, claimed up until his death, also in 2019, that it was self-defense, that basically um, Charles came at him with a bat, and so he shot him to protect himself. Uh, according to records, Tylee was in the house and saw that this, this happened. Uh, the police are still sort of still investigating that. I mean, there's not a whole lot to investigate since Alex has also been, has died and been cremated. But um, it was just after this in August of 2019 where Lori took Tylee and JJ, as well as Alex and Melanie Boudreau, and took off to Rexburg, Idaho. Shortly after arriving at Idaho, uh, JJ was enrolled in uh, a local school, but disenrolled very quickly after that. Um, as well as his um, support animal was returned to the school which, from which they got him. JJ was autistic and needed a social support animal, but she returned the social support animal to the people that had trained him. Uh, that's one lucky dog, because given their track record, we all know what could have happened there. Um, so then we skip forward to early September, um, September 8th, the infamous visit that J.J. Lori Alex took to Yellowstone National Park. 
uh, with the last known photographs of either JJ or Tylee. Uh, it was also during the span of August to September that Lori rented a storage unit that was later found to be filled with nothing but the children's toys and the possessions. Um, September 9th, uh, cell phone records place Alex on Chad Daybell's property near the Pet Cemetery. And it was that same day that Chad texted his wife, Tammy Daybell, saying that he had shot a raccoon that was seen running along the fence and buried it in the Pet Cemetery. Many people believe that was code for Tylee, who was found later on buried in that very Pet Cemetery. Uh, also in September, uh, JJ did attend classes for three weeks, but was quickly withdrawn. And uh, according to uh, records, Tylee was never enrolled anywhere in school in Idaho, even though from September until December of 2019, when everybody started looking for her, it was always Lori's contention that Tylee was attending college at BYU Rexburg, though there was no records of her ever being enrolled there. October 1st um, is when a video, surveillance video of both uh, Lori and somebody that appears to be Alex were seen at their self-storage plus um, 10 by 10 storage unit in Rexburg, uh, putting what appeared to be a bicycle and some other children's uh, possessions into storage. Bear in mind this entire time, Melanie Palawowski and Alex Cox are living in the same condo complex as Lori and her children at the same time. So it's a nice little happy, weird commune going on there. October 2nd, 2019, Brandon Boudreaux, after coming home to work from home, after attending the gym, was shot at in his Tesla by uh, an unknown assailant. He said to him, it sounded like a paintball gun, but obviously the bullet hole in his windshield said differently. Uh, after a lot of investigation by the Gilbert, Arizona police, uh, the assailant was never found, though uh, reports of a Jeep that fit the, resemb the, fit the description of Charles Vallow, Lori's now dead fourth husband's Jeep that he had actually given to Tylee to drive, was seen in the neighborhood with a man that fit Alex Cox's description driving it. Uh, about a week later, October 9th, is when Tammy Daybell, when checking the mail in front of their Salem, Idaho residence, says that she heard what she thought was a paintball gun fire at her. She had no idea who would have uh, wanted to shoot her, but she did post about it on Facebook. Also, between October and November, you have a huge saga with Brandon and Melanie Boudreau. Uh, Melanie is already dating Ian Polowski at this time, but... She is basically harassing her husband, Brandon, who has secured custody of their children by virtue of her cult craziness. And she actually and has a restraining order filed against her. But she, he actually takes the children to his parents' home in Utah. But Alex drives Melanie to see her children, and she basically ends up uh, harassing the Boudreau family, ending up getting put into jail for violating a restraining order, even though Alex and Lori bailed her out. October 19th, 2019, uh, Tammy passes away of mysterious unknown circumstances in her sleep. Uh, no autopsy was done, and she was uh, buried at the Evergreen Cemetery in Springville on October 22nd. Uh, according to everyone uh, associated with it, Chad was pushing for cremation, but thank goodness that did not happen. Uh, October 25th, a friend of Tylee's, as well as Tylee's older half-brother Colby, tell, tells a local Idaho newspaper that they had received texts from Tylee's phone around October 25th, which says, Hi, I miss you guys. Love you. So somebody was using Tylee's phone. Thanksgiving week of 2019. Melanie Gibbs starts to separate, and David Warwick start to separate themselves from Chad and Lori based on uh, their testimony. Their last interaction with them was in September or late August because David was a speaker along with Chad at a, a vow event in Idaho. They stayed with Lori. He did say he, they did see uh, 
J.J. alive at that time, but he was very withdrawn, was kind of hard to handle. He was climbing on things, and Lori had told them both that he, she suspected he had gone dark and was now a zombie. And uh, the last time they saw J.J. is when Alex, his uncle, brought him in sleeping in his arms, and that is the last time they saw them. So fast forward again to Thanksgiving. Uh, Melanie is in Arizona and receives a call from Melanie uh, saying that basically she had told, uh, receives a call from Lori saying that she had told police that JJ was with her at the movie Frozen 2 and could she go to a theater and take pictures uh, of random children saying that she had JJ. However, Melanie absolutely refused to do this and actually confronted uh, Chad and Lori on a phone call that I actually did a kind of a reaction to. It's in the playlist above. So if you want to hear more about that, but basically Melanie refused to be her, her, her alibi because Kay and Larry Woodcock, who had basically wondered what happened to their grandson, were trying to see him, talk to him, anything. Lori refused to let them see him. Uh, she had started telling Melanie and other people that she had gone, that she had allowed JJ to go live with Larry and Kay Woodcock, and then all of a sudden calls her and says, hey, need you to lie to the police. But uh, that was not the case, and the police did a welfare check at the behest of the Woodcocks on November 26, 2019, and that's when Lori spun her tale of JJ being with Melanie, even though Melanie told them, no, he was not with me. The very next day, police suspecting that something was very suspicious, got a search warrant for uh, Lori Ballow's condo and townhouse, as well as Melanie Palowalski's and Alex Cox. Got there, the Ballow residence was cleared out and they were gone. So no search was ever done. Uh, then December 1st, Chad and Lori catch an American Airlines flight to Luhu, Hawaii, on the island of Kauai. The children were not with them and in all papers and testimony uh, surrounding that marriage, Lori said two things. Either she had no children at all or Tylee had already had passed away years ago. So there's some confliction there, but basically she was letting them know that these children were not with her and were not her responsibility. Um, December 6th, Melanie again contacts both Gilbert uh, police as well as Idaho police to again reinforce the fact that she did not have JJ on the week of November 26, but also said that uh, Lori and Chad had called her and asked her to lie. Uh, deputies in Fremont County, Idaho reopened Tammy Daybell's case, case as under possible, um, possible criminal circumstances and her body is exhumed on December 11th to perform an autopsy of in Utah. That, those results were completed uh, in February of 2000, or excuse me, December of 2020, but they have yet, yet to be released to even the family. So we will have to wait for the trial to find out what that might have shown. December 12th, Alex Cox dies on the floor of his uh, then wife, Salima Pastani's, a uh, bathroom from what was later revealed to be a blood clot. Um, though still, most people still consider it kind of mysterious, even though he had been suffering from some chest pains and breathing problems just prior to his death. It wasn't an ongoing problem that he dealt with all of his life. It seemed to be more of an acute onset problem, as well as the fact he had gone to Mexico to try to get some um, breathing drugs. But uh, anyway, he did die December 12th. 2019. December 20th, 2019, Rexburg Police Department announced that JJ and Tylee are officially missing, naming Chad and Lori as persons of interest. Uh, December 23rd, Daybell and Vallow's attorney, Sean Bartholet, receives a statement calling the parent, releases a statement calling the parents loving and devoted, and that the allegations will be um, rectified and not to give in to rumor and speculations. December 30th, the Rexburg Police Department counters that by saying it's obvious that the two know where the children are and are refusing to cooperate. Meanwhile, January 3rd, 2020, uh, 
A search warrant is executed on the Daybell residence in Salem, where they recover 43 items, including computers, cell phones, journals, documents, and medications, and everything is sent to the FBI for analysis. And this is where they found the text records, the raccoon story, all of that stuff. Between January 3rd and January 25th, more stuff hits the fan. Uh, basically, the Woodcocks release $20,000 reward for anybody that has information on the recovery of both JJ and Tylee. Uh, Chad Daybell's brother, Matt Daybell, encourages Chad to cooperate with the police. No woman is worth this, Chad. Um, but then also make sure to distance the rest of the Daybell family, including uh, Ch uh, Chad and Tammy's children, from Chad and Lori, saying that they did not believe in his religious views, nor were they in any way connected to this cult. Uh, on the same thing, you have um, Lori's mother and sisters coming out at first, being very supportive of their of their daughter and si uh sister, but then later on we will find they do backtrack on that. Um, the body cam footage from the Charles Vallow shooting is released, and that reinvigorates the suspicion that perhaps it wasn't self-defense, it was murder. Then, January 25th, 2020, uh, the Kauai Police Department serves Lori with a notice from Idaho saying she must produce JJ and Tylee within five days for a welfare check to the Rexburg Police Department. Um, Kauai police search the Dayville residence in Hawaii uh, and also seize the couple's rental car, but nothing was found of any substance. Uh, also, um, reporters do accost both of them in Hawaii, asking them the questions that led to the famous clip of them refusing to say. Uh, meanwhile, Kay and Larry Woodcock on January 29th uh, file a motion for guardianship for uh, JJ and basically are granted it. On January 30th, of course, JJ and Tylee are not uh, presented to the police department for a welfare check within the five days. And Kay Woodcock holds a press conference saying she is very disappointed. February 3rd, the Storage unit in Idaho is basically has not had the rent paid on it in several months, so it's basically turned over to police for investigation. Uh, several reporters enter it, and inside are all of the children's possessions, pretty much. February 12th, um, it is, we find out for the first time that the life insurance policy from Charles Vallow did go $1 million to K. Woodcock. So we now think we have the motive for why Charles Fowler was killed. Um, February 20th, uh, Lori is arrested in Hawaii and extradited back to Idaho, as well as being charged with obstruction of justice, criminal solicitation to commit a crime, contempt of court, and abandonment of children. Uh, Lori waves, tries to waive her extradition to Idaho, but basically no go, you're going back. Uh, she arrives back in Idaho on March 5th and they place her in the Madison County Jail. She refuses to speak to anyone but her attorney. Um, she makes her initial court appearance on March 6th. Um, they uh, basically set her bail at $1 million because uh, they want to make sure she doesn't get out and she doesn't. From the end of March to early May, several attempts by Lori's legal team to reduce her bail are filed and rejected. Um, you basically have then the autopsy of Alex Cox being released May 8th. Uh, found out he did die of blood clots to the, to the lungs. Um, this is where also when Melanie Gibb gives that very famous East Idaho News uh, interview. It's here on YouTube, East Idaho News, Melanie Gibb. It's worth a watch. Uh, June 9th, um, this is when the famous search at the Daybell residence takes place, uh, and that's where they uncover human remains both near the pond on the property as well as in the uh, pet cemetery. The body in the pet cemetery had been decapitated, partially burned, where uh, which turned out later to be Tylee, and the body near the pond was just kind of wrapped up and buried. It appeared to be J.J. 
uh, June uh, on June 9th, Chad, of course, is arrested and booked in on two counts of felony charges of concealment, distribution, or alteration of evidence. Uh, and his bail is set at $1 million as well on June 10th. Uh, memorials for J.J. and Tylee because the, the fact that it was them was released several days later. Uh, it was during this amount of time that Lori's family does turn on her and say they never thought their daughter could hurt her children, but evidently they were wrong. And then COVID, and then fast forward to 2021, uh, basically the, it's been announced that Chad and Lori will be tried together in July. And uh, as such, we uh, do not know the results of Tammy Daybell's autopsy. Those are sealed, so I assume that we will be finding out at trial. So that in a nutshell is the Daybell case. Um, one of the more interesting ones I have covered. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I will be back later this week with uh, more original true crime content. I, I hope you're enjoying it. I really appreciate everyone's support. And until next time, keep on crying. Thank you.